What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about the basics of multiprocessing in python so let us get right into it so we're going to talk about multiprocessing but before we start with the coding we're going to talk about why multiprocessing is even interesting why you should maybe consider using it um, and I have made a video on this channel called why is python so slow so either it's already online or I'm going to upload it uh, in a couple of days and in this video I talk about something called the global interpreter lock and we're not going to get into too much details in this video today because I have already explained it in that video why python is so slow um, but basically what you need to know is that actual multi-threading does not exist in python at least not in the C python implementation that all of us are may, uh, probably using. So if you go to python.org slash downloads and you download Python, that is C Python uh, usually. Uh, otherwise you could use of course Jython and so on, but we're not going to get into too much detail here. Basically what you need to know is there is no real multi-threading in Python, especially not if you have CPU bound tasks. So if you do a lot of computations and you wanna do all of them in parallel, you cannot do that with multi-threading because of something called the global interpreter lock. However, this is not the case for multiple processes, uh, processes, because if you spawn multiple processes in Python, you're not spawning just something, some threads that are running on the same interpreter, you are spawning multiple interpreters with their own global interpreter lock. So basically you can do things in parallel. And this is very useful. And in today's video, we're going to do a very trivial example. So it's not going to be something uh, practical that you're going to need, but I'm going to explain to you uh, how these processes work and how you can spawn them and you're going to see uh, why this is important and you're going to see what massive speed up we can get through using multiprocessing. So we're going to import multiprocessing which is part of the core Python stack so you don't even need to install anything using pip and we're going to import it as mp. And then we're also going to import time in order to measure the execution speed or execution time. And we're going to import math in order to do some calculations. And we're going to do something very simple. It's not going to be anything useful, as I said. We're going to have three functions and it's going to be make calculation, make calculation one. And we're going to pass numbers here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a bunch of lists, we're going to call them results. A is an empty list, results B and results C is an empty list. So make calculation one is just going to say for number in numbers in the list that we pass here, we're just going to say results A append. And we're going to do math.sqrt of number uh, no, cubed. This is just some calculation, right? So we have a list of numbers that we pass to that function. For each number, we just say, okay, take the square root of the cube, uh, and then append the result to result a. And we're going to have three different functions that are not going to be quite different from each other. Um, make calculation two, and here we're going to do number to the power of four. And then we're going to just say, number to the power of five, like that. There you go. Uh, and of course, we're going to call this three. So you can choose whatever calculations you want to make, you can do something else as well. Uh, just pick something that can be done in parallel. So what we do here, oh, by the way, we need to change the list here. So result B and result C, what we're doing here is we're just calculating stuff and adding it to a list A, B and C. Now we can do that sequentially, but there is no problem with doing it at the same time. So if we have the same list um, with a bunch of elements and I pass them to this function or I pass the list to this function, to this function and to this function, there is no reason to not do it at the same time. So why do I have to do one, two, three in that order? I can do it at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just execute that without multiprocessing and we're going to measure the time. So we're going to say if name equals main, by the way, when we're doing multiprocessing, this is uh, something that we have to do. 
in order to uh, not get an error message. So whenever you're dealing with multiprocessing, you want to have this if name equals main. You can also have it in ordinary programs. As you can see in PyCharm, I get the start button here. Uh, but this is a must if you're doing multiprocessing. So you want to have this entry point here, if name equals main. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to say number list equals list of range. And now let me just see what I have here. Uh, what number is this? This is three zeros here, three zeros here. Five million is a good number to see the effect. So we're going to have five million numbers in that list. And what we're going to do is we're going to say start equals time time end equals time time. And in between, we're just going to say make calculation one on number list and make two on number list and make three on number list. There you go. And in the end, we're just going to say print end minus start. And we're going to see how long it takes. So if I run this, this should take, I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, three seconds. I'm not sure, probably something around 15 seconds. As far as I remember, because I did that yesterday. Uh, maybe we can scale down the number first to 1 million. That should take around three seconds, hopefully. There you go, 3.4 seconds for 1 million elements. Now we're going to do the same thing but with three processes running at the same time. So we're going to before that we're going to say start equals time, time, end equals time, time. And here what we're going to do, uh, or actually before we start the processes, we're going to define the processes. So we're going to say p1 equals mp process. This is how you define a new process uh, that you want to start in the same way that you do it with multi threading, we now need to pass a target. So we say, process target and we're going to say make calculation one is going to be the target and the arguments are going to be number list and we need to add a comma here because this is a tuple not just parentheses and we're going to do the same thing for process two and process three we're going to have calculation one two and three with the same argument so in the same way that we usually have threads with threading dot thread target, whatever, and so on, we now have processes and we just need to start them. So we can go ahead and say, um, we can go ahead and say p one dot start and p two start p three start. And we're going to do the same thing, we're going to actually solve the same problem. What do we have here? redefined above without usage. Oh, yeah, we need to print and minus start here. So now actually, we're doing the same thing, but at the same time with three processes. So if I run this, you can see here 1.07. And then 3.8. So we have some speed up here. Um, but we can even get more speed up than that if we use more um, more numbers. So if we change that to 5 million, you're going to see that the parallel execution with three processes is going to be finished quite quickly, as you can see here 2.9, almost three seconds. And the other one will be running for I think 15 seconds. So you can actually see that this is happening in parallel. Let's just wait until it's finished. And then we can um, also do something else. I'm going to show as you can see here 20 seconds. So if we use a calculator here to calculate the speed up 20.7 divided by 2.9, this is a speed up of 7.13. So uh, seven times faster. Uh, this is very impressive. And now we're going to also see just in case you are doubting that, uh, that we're actually getting the same result. So we're going to say temp a equals results a and we're going to do the same thing for B, uh, not G, come on, B, and for C. And what we're now going to do is we're going to in the end compare print temp A equals result A. And the same thing for B 
and C, B and C. And if those three print statements return true or print true, we're going to know that the result is actually the same. Now, we're not going to run this on 5 million. We're going to run this on 1 million again. Uh, but you're going to see that we actually end up with the same result. So we solve the same problem, but a lot faster. As you can see, true, true, true. So um, we can run that with, with uh, 10 million as well. I'm going to do that while I talk a little bit about the code. Um, so you can see that we can solve the same problem. We just have to spawn multiple processes. As you can see, 5.4 seconds and we're done. Everything we wanted to do is done. So if that was a task we want to do, why should we do it without multiprocessing? We can utilize multiple processes in order to solve the same problem instead of just using one process that is not capable of uh, solving it concurrently. So we can speed up the process massively by just introducing multiple processes. This is not uh, a problem at all. And I think the, the larger the number gets, the more speed up we're going to have. So maybe we're going to have something about uh, around 30 seconds here or 40 seconds here. Um, but we're going to end up with the same results. Uh, as you can see here, so calculator 38 divided by 5, 7.6 speed up. This is a very good speed up. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and 